I'm Jack Dennis, and I'm fishing in the middle of the Yellowstone River, right here in beautiful Yellowstone Park. I'm fishing with a couple friends of mine. Hey, Mr. Caddis, Gary LaFontaine, and Mr. Henry's Fork, Mike Lawson. And we're gonna be fishing caddis patterns because it's caddis time here in the Yellowstone. You're gonna learn how to cast the caddis, how to work them in the water, and most important, how to tie them properly. Yellowstone Park is probably our greatest fly fishing park. Filled with streams with wild native fish, Yellowstone Park offers the fly fishermen great opportunities. And that's why we're here, because it has great caddis hatches. The Henry's Fork is famous for its rainbows, also for its mayfly hatches. But sometimes people forget that it does have other insects and the caddis are popular. And we're gonna join Mike Lawson as we discover Henry's Fork caddis. We'll be venturing down south to one of America's great streams, the Green River below Flaming Gorge. I'll be joining Gary as we discover caddis fishing opportunities on this famous river. We'll be joining two of my friends, Mike Lawson, famous fly tire and guide from the Henry's Fork, and Mr. Caddis, Gary LaFontaine, author, fly tire, a fly fisherman that has made the study of insects and their relationship to fly fishing his life. His books, Challenge of the Trout and Caddis Flies, have become classics among the fly fishermen. His innovative caddis patterns have changed our approach to caddis flies. I became fascinated with caddis flies probably when I was chasing the green drake. Now the green drake is a giant eastern mayfly and very large trout rise for these mayflies on rivers like the Beaver Kill in New York. And I would run all over New England and New York and Pennsylvania looking for the green drake hatch. Now the green drake is a crapshoot. Sometimes you hit it, usually you don't. If you hit it one out of four years, you're going to be a very lucky angler. But when I was out there, whether the green drake was there or not, there was a small little caddis fly, a dark blue sedge, and it would come in hordes, and it would always be there. It would always be consistent, but I couldn't catch fish when the sedge were on the water, when the fish were feeding on it. And because I couldn't catch fish, it became a challenge. And it was that challenge that started me studying exploring, thinking about caddis flies and how to take advantage of the great hatches of that particular insect. Now, let's join Gary and Mike on the Yellowstone River. Gary, it looks like a great fishing day and there's a few caddis coming off the river, I see. You've done so much work with your caddis. What do you think we ought to start out with? You say there's a few coming off. That's all you need is a few. I think a lot of times when people come to a river and they see that there's nothing happening visibly on the surface, when there's not a lot of rises, when there's not a lot of insects, they automatically start thinking towards the deeper water. And that's fine if they want to fish on the bottom. I think you can still catch fish on a dry fly on a day like this if you very carefully stalk the shallows because there's going to be fish in there always looking for the stray insect. I like to use an emergent. I like to use an emergent pupa because the fish see a number of them during the day. They rise to them, they'll take the natural, they'll also take the artificial. So I would pick out a very specific piece of water. It doesn't have to be deep, maybe even as shallow as a foot and a half, and you find very, very good fish up in those tight waters. Well, there's one rose down there again, Gary. Now, how are you gonna make the cast over that fish? The nice thing about the emergent is you fish it just like you would any dry fly. Now with a dry fly, you can take it upstream, you can take it downstream, or you can take it across. That particular fish there, I would try to get on line with them, and I'd try to feed slack down to them. You don't need to twitch it. You don't need to move it. When the imitation is right, you don't need the motion. You know why the whole myth grew up about needing motion on an emergent pupa? It grew up because the flies they had, the imitations they had, were so inadequate that they had to use motion to obscure the deficiencies of the fly. There was a whole tremendous myth about the super caddis that would fire up through the surface. It's not true. They drift on the underside of the surface, but if you put the imitation to them right, bam, they'll take it. There we go, okay, nice, thanks, Mike. 
Boy, that's a pretty one. He has nice colors. Thank you. He's got that pupil right there in his nose. Well, Gary, have you got another one of those flies I could use? I I'm anxious it. to try that myself. I have plenty, Mike. Fortunately, they're not that hard to tie. <laughs>